Um, okay, so I'm going to start with um, just lay a thread foundation. Starting at the eye and then just moving backwards. Um, you'll see it with this specific uh, hook that I use, I, I kind of, because of the angle of the hook, you, you almost have it hook your eye almost facing down towards the down towards the table just so that you can get the, the thread up to um, you know quite far down the the bend of the hook so where I'm going to actually tie in the CDC um, I think one of the most important things with it is um, depending on the size hook and pattern you're going to be using you want to make sure that you've got the right size CDC feather um, You'll see only re well, yeah. You'll you'll really only pick up why I say that when you start doing a couple. Um, but you really want a feather that, when you tie in the tip, which I'll show you now. Um, once you reach, once I've finished the palmering of the actual CDC feather, um, the 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 last the last few strands of the CDC towards the base of the feather, they actually remain like spread out. Um, whereas if you use a long feather, you're going to end up just having to trap under and then cut off, um, and then you don't get left with these like really nice fluffy. I mean, I know it's difficult. To, oh, maybe you can't see it. Um, these nice fluffy you little. Side, you side of the hook. Oh, my side of the I don't know if you can see that, but there's a whole bunch of like these look like, real straggly little CDC fibers sticking out there, and that pretty much comes about at the end of the. Once you finish the once you finish the palming and there's still some fibers left over. Whereas if you use a super long CDC feather, um, especially ones with a stiff stem, they become difficult to work with. They bend, they crack. Um, these feathers are better suited to like a split split thread technique. You know where you can, um, you know, open them up, lay them in the lay them in your petersen tool or whatever. Um, you want you want feathers of um, you know short sort of wide, very very thin. Um, a thin stem, just easy to palmer. Okay, we'll give it a crack. So once I've got my um, thread, you know, fairly down, uh, or about halfway down the bend of the hook, um, I'm just going to take this uh, one sing one single CDC feather, and I'm going to tie it backwards so that I'm going to tie it in from the tips of the feather. Um, I kind of put it in the middle, just make one lo loose long wrap over. I don't know if you can see it like that. See it? Yeah. Sorry, I can't look at the back there. Um, and then just kind of just tweak it so that I'm not wasting a lot of CDC feathers, or a lot of the feather, and then just secure it down. And then just wind it back to about three quarters of the shank, maybe a bit further, um, towards the eye of the hook. Uh, then I'll move the hook back into um, you know more of an upright position, so the tips of the feather are like trapped, are trapped at the the bend of the hook there. Uh, then I'll take my hackle pliers, grab the the base of the feather, okay, and then what I try and do is just give it a one or two um, you know twists with the hackle plier, just so kind of almost forming like a rope. Um, with the feather, and then literally all it is is just palmering the feather, trying to get proportions right. But it's a super messy fly, so you know it's not about getting something that's um, you know you know it, it, you know if there's one or two strands out, it, it really makes no difference. This for me is the whole the beauty about this fly is it's it is a buggy thing. It is supposed to look messy. You can tie them heavily dressed, super sparse, depending on, you know, if you're fishing riffle water, you know, with lots of broken water and, you know, uh, a lot of chop, then you want something that's a little, that's more heavily dressed with lots of CDC and quite heavy elk. Um, and I'll show you some examples, like, you know, if you guys come around later, like a heavily dressed one. Um, and then some that have got basically barely any CDC or in a very, very thin elk hair wing for... Uh, like glide water, um, stuff where fish, you know, water where fish are just more, 
they're a little bit a um, little bit pickier. Um, they're a little bit more uh, cautious about drag. You know, in broken water and stuff like that, they don't have a lot of time to look at flies. You know, so you want something that is kind of like a general. Um, just look super buggy and they come up and grab it. Whereas in that flat sea, you know, flat glide water, they've got ample time to kind of, you know, spot the prey, look at it, drop back down again. Um, you know, almost like Spring Creek sort of fly. You know, that you you, so you want something a bit more sparse. But this this fly can do that for you. You just need to vary the amount of material you're using. Um, but as I said, for for like our Cape streams and and a lot of the Natal rivers and that, um, I like something with quite a bit of material, especially because um, our fish are pretty they fa they're fairly forgiving when it comes to like what they actually eat so they're not really looking for a size 20 you know uh pmd or anything like that um okay so i've got um most of the most of the feathers um wound towards the front so i'm just going to take a step back here it's a bit too much material there and then just make two kind of wraps over it and then just trim off. Basically, I, I've just got like a bunch of the thick part of the stem and a bunch of loose, like. Okay, sorry. See it? It's uh, and look, this one is probably not going to be super heavily dressed, but it kind of gives you the. You'll be able to see what it's meant to do. There are going to be some fibers sticking out once the, once the elk's on there. Um, then what I'll do is you'll see this. There are already some fibers sticking out. I'll just pull those back, and then just make one or two wraps over it so that they kind of sticking out backwards more uh, more like legs or um, yeah just just more uh, more surface area for them to grab whereas if they're sticking up to the top you know you're not going to get them sitting against the water um, okay so that's about it let's just secure that down pull my thread uh, next I'm going to take my piece of natural oak um, and again, this is going to vary. The, the amount you cut is going to be depend on how bulky you want, how bulky you want to fly, the sort of order you're going to fish, um, and you just get all the loose fibers, short fibers, out of there. Tips in the hair stacker. Just give it a couple of taps. Okay, then, look, it's difficult, I don't know how I would explain it, but basically what I want, the wing is to be just past the, the bend of the hook. I don't want, you know, like a, a huge tent sort of wing, it's not the purpose of it. And as I was saying to you, I'm pretty confident that a lot of the time they're eating it as a emerging mayfly. So, like, the wings, the, 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 the wing is... Um, you know, it's not it's not excessively it's not like a caddis wing where it's laid out on the back of it like a tent. You know, it's it's more of a um, it's a bit like I don't know if you guys have seen Bob. If you know any of you guys know Bob White's flies, uh, he does a fly called a deer hair emerger. It's very similar sort of principle fly, and it just this fly just imitates a bunch of different things stuck in the film. Um, the wings easy to it's easy to see. Um, but I think the length for me, which works well, is just past the bend of the hook. So I'll put that on the top of the shank. Uh, not quite. Give yourself a little bit of space before the eye. Um, and then make one or two loose wraps. Then just kind of get everything in order. Just making sure that your your wing's situated on the on the on the top of the on the top of the CDC. Um, if you if you don't make it, if you don't make those um, ir original wraps um, secure enough, um, you're going to find it's going to splay around the hook, or you've used too much LK. So if you find that happening, then I'd step it down in terms of how much LK you're actually using. And then just trim off the excess. I'm not overly concerned about like you know getting it, my thread all the way around. The original fly I saw on the internet um, 
or in a book when I first saw it. Um, it actually just has the, the LK, that's pretty much the fly. Um, it just kind of sits above that. Um, as I said to you, it's just kind of been a fly that I fish so much and t so many of that I've just kind of constantly trying to adapt it. And, you know, it, it's just something that, you know, it almost feels too easy. So I'm trying to make it at least like there's some there's some fun to tie it. Otherwise, it just gets a bit bored. Um, and it was probably only when I found the CDC dubbing um, that I really was like, okay, well, then now this, you know, everything's going to float. And I'm not going to have to use a lot of dry fly float and whatever. Um, but I have run out of it. So I've used other dubbing and it still works. Um, but it just, for me, the whole point about it was it just made the fly even more buggy. I could pick it, pick out legs and, um, you know, just get more, excuse my language, more shit lying in the surface. You know, like that was the whole thing for me about it. Um, so, it, yeah, more, more just messy. So, if you don't have CDC dubbing, could you just take some CDC fibers? Absolutely. So, that was the other option I think I said to Jeremy is like, you can either just cut. You know, take a take a CDC feather and just make your own dubbing. Just cut, just cut um, small, yeah, just cut bits off the edges and stuff like that. And eventually, you're gonna get. And it's so there's so there's so little you actually need for the amount of dubbing. You'll see when you start tying it, um, like, and it's so it's so easy to pick out. You know, so like, it, I think it's a great option. Um, I've just got it, so it's <laughs> I kind of use it more than anything else. Um, and then start. Um, I definitely try and hold the um, the LK wing um, so that when I do put pressure on it, it doesn't kind of flay up again. Um, not you can pull down on it, but I wouldn't go too excessively. And then it's a case of literally just winding till you've got a little bit of space um, just before the high eye. The one thing I my, my greatest bugbear if I've tied a fly and that it's you know, I grab it out of my box when I'm about to fly and then, then like it's jam full of material in the eye and I, I can't thread it through and so I like I'm almost obsessive about leaving more more room behind the eye just so I can get my thread through as fast as possible. Um so yeah, definitely don't don't go too close to the eye. I think that's a lot of that's a mistake I see with a lot of guys tying. They they try and cram as much stuff before the eye and there's no need to do it, you know. Um, and that's pretty much it, and then just a, just a whip finish.